In the last videos we've rigged up a, uh, a zombie shock trooper and we made sure that he can follow us and walk towards us. But it's only half of the fun. It is at some point a time that we, you know, can kill it and that it can kill us as well. Uh, now I hope you've upgraded to the latest version of FPS control. Uh, at the point of this recording it's beta 5.1. Lots of new improvements so I highly encourage you to upgrade before you continue. Alright, so let's continue on. We have the character here and when we play the game and move towards a location where it's hard for him to find us, like behind these boxes, then he will run straight into these boxes and, and sort of skate around them because he doesn't know how to avoid any obstacles. He's just going straight to the player and, and in a straight line from A to B. So we need to fix that, but fixing that is pretty easy. If we go into the Shock Trooper, go to the Path Manager, it asks us if we want to use a navigation grid. And let's check that off and say yes. And then it asks us what is the navigation grid file name. And in that we're going to type navgrid. Now you're you're asking me why navgrid? What where is this file? Well, if we go up here into the scene here, you see that there is a navgrid already set up. And um we can actually visualize it in the game to show the nav grid. Now if you don't have one you can go up to the rain menus and create one. Uh, but in the shell shock scene it's already been set up for us. So um, inside of the nav grid you can uh, show the region mesh and there's a little checkbox that says show all and if I check that you will see that there is a mesh, an invisible mesh that was laying over all our geometry in the world. And as you can see by the little um, arrows on the floor, those are the direction that the character can move in when he is um, you know, walking over those pieces. So as you can see, there are only spots where there's no navigation grid at the points where there are colliders around other obstacles. So we can actually change the navigation grid and make it a little bit narrower if we wanted to. So if we go to the right here and see as we say we want the cell size to be a bit smaller like a 0.5 and we want the uh, the distance to be a bit smaller like 30 and um, you can make the region size a bit smaller as well like 40 and then if we refresh the recast it is going to calculate it for us so it's finding all the colliders in the world it's creating the uh, the nav meshes for us and it's re-importing them into the scene it only takes a minute it's actually quite fast and now when I re-visualize it, you can see that the slopes near the sides is a lot narrower so that the character can walk um, closer towards the player. Now, of course, m choosing very narrow spaces is of course also more intensive on your memory. So you may or may not want to do that, but this is fine for now. So I'm going to go and turn the visibility of the nav grid off again. And now go back into our shock trooper then into our path manager and make sure that the nav grid and the navigation grid is turned on. So let's run the game and see the huge difference that this makes. If I... oh he's not walking. Oh yes he is. So if I go and hide behind these boxes here he's not walking straight towards the boxes he's walking around them and then finds me. Pretty creepy. Alright so of course that's nice, but there's still a lot of work to be done still. So uh, let's continue on with the character here. Now, if we go to the top of the behavior tree here, we can add a couple of variables. And so I'm going to add the uh, add four variables here. One of them is called health. And the other one is got hit, which is going to register if the character got hit or not. Then the third one is dead which means he is dead. Um, and the fourth one, no, let's, let me just, let's just wait with that one for now. We're just going to use three variables. Now, let's go back into our root node here. And a sequencer pretty much goes through these items and um, you know executes them in order. But what we're like looking to do is we're looking to give more behaviors to the character. So one of them is to detect the player and to move towards the player. But another one is to die. Another one is to get hit. Um, so we don't need a sequencer that goes through one by one. We need something else. So first right click the behavior tree and then go create and then a selector. And I'm going to move the selector up and give this one the root name instead. And then this sequencer I'm going to drag onto 
the selector and call this one find player now you may ask what is a selector a selector is uh, almost the same thing as a sequencer except you know it goes through them in order until one of them returns false so if he cannot find the player then he goes to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing that's what a sequencer does so it keeps executing one node until it returns false and it goes to the next node which is really what we need when the character is dead we need him to stay dead we don't need him to get back up and walk again so um, that's what a sequencer does so um, also with the find player we need to have a precondition it can only find the player when it actually is healthy when it's not dead so we need to have a precondition of health is larger than zero so as long as he's not dead he can find the player so that's that next thing we need is to define more of these sequencers of what the guy can do so right click create another sequencer and then create that uh, rename that something like um, got hit doesn't really matter what n what your name is just for you it's easier to read so uh, the precondition of getting hit is that got hit variable um, equals one so that means he got hit uh, and in that we can create uh, multiple notes but we'll do that a little bit later then we need one more sequencer which is death and the precondition of that is health um, is smaller than or equals zero so that means you know either health is depleted all the way to zero or it is smaller than zero which means he's also dead okay so that's great um, now let's run the game and it probably should function pretty much the same as what we had before I see no movement, so I must have done something wrong. Let's check real quick. Zeros. Oh, of course, when we define the variables here, we set the two zeros as an initial value. So let's set that to 50, for example. Let's run the game and see what happens now. And there he goes into his first behavior, and he starts finding the player. Okay, so that all works as expected. Um, but now we need to fill in the rest of the details and have some logic going on of when the character got hit or when he's dying. Um, and that is is done by uh, some scripts. But don't worry, for those of you that don't like scripting, we're going to clone some scripts from the, from the rat AI, the little rat that walks around the world. So it's actually going to be pretty easy. So uh, let's do that next.